In this video, I'm going to show how to take this intake manifold and just cut this kind of half dome shape out of the middle of it, right where this marker is drawn here. So uh, I did the, this exact application here uh, before we had our constraint system released. So I'm going to redo it now and show how we can do this with a constraint system. And I think it's going to make things a lot easier for a lot of people. So um, yeah, so we'll start off just by coming over here and going to 3D CAD and do a new sketch. Then we're going to click on the working plane and we're going to change it to the YZ plane. We're going to select the YZ plane because this manifold is going to kind of be set up on the table sort of along the X axis. So that is the YZ plane, okay? Yep. Okay, so we're in the YZ plane, that's good. So now I can just double click on my sketch and um, Yep, so now we're uh, on the sketch, we're looking straight down the XY, but if we look at kind of the world system relative to the machine, this is the YZ plane. And you can also see that this, um, this button in the upper right hand corner here says that we're looking straight down the right side of the machine, kind of like. Yep, so, so the first thing I'll do here is we have some uh, shortcut keys like for a circle, center point circle is really common, or for a line we have L. Um, and you'll, so we'll see those here in a minute. Um, and then D is for dimension. And these are just keys on the keyboard, right? So if I press L on the keyboard, it, le it lets me then draw a line afterwards. Uh, or a C is for circle, that, that sort of thing. So we're gonna go over here and uh, start off by just pressing C, and then I can click anywhere. The center point's gonna go on my, uh, the center of my origin here. And I'll just draw a circle. And now this circle here is going to represent kind of like the dome right here. Okay, that's going to be the full dome. So uh, we also have like a parting line right down the middle here. Uh, so I'll draw that. So we're going to change out of circle mode and hit press L on the keyboard. And now what I'm going to do is just kind of hover over the, the origin. Now you can see that yellow dotted line that it's drawing, which means the point that I'm going to create or kind of the starting point of the line is going to always be aligned to this origin that we hovered over. Okay, so that's good, I want that. And then I also want it to be uh, coincident with the circle itself, right? So now it's going to be aligned with the origin, but coincident with the circle itself. That's my starting point. And now the other side, we just want to be coincident with the other side of the circle, okay? So there we go. You can't really see it there, but there's a line there. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's good. So now I'll press D on the keyboard and that's going to let me then dimension. We kind of get that arrow uh, so I can click on the circle and we're going to just put a number in, let's say four, four inches. Okay, that's good. So now what, what I'm going to do is just kind of draw like the rest of this manifold, just some basic, uh, some arbitrary points that sort of represent what the manifold kind of looks like here. It's not really critical because we're not going to cut that part, just something I want to want to do. So I'll hit L for line and I'll click on this uh, first point that we created here and just kind of go over and just create something kind of like this. Okay. And now this point here, I'm actually going to want to align that with this just so we get kind of a, a nice even shape. And this point I will align it with that right there. Okay. So that looks good. So let's go ahead and dimension. So I can hit D on the keyboard again dimension and I'll just make this two inches and I'll make this side over here two inches also and I'll make this 45 degree I'll make that say three inches and I'll make this three inches and I'll dimension some uh, angles we click right there and right there and we'll just do 135 which is 90 plus 45 and the same thing right here 135 Okay, so we're getting close to be to a fully constrained drawing. I'll just go ahead and dimension this real quick. Probably don't have to, but that's fine. So now if I do something like, um, if I say change the, the diameter of the circle to say five inches, you can kind of see the whole drawing sort of updates, right? Because it maintains like the two inches between these two points and the whole thing just kind of updates. Yep. Okay, so now let's go ahead and turn this into 3D. So if I come over here, uh, you can see that extrude uh, is an E, so if I click and then hit E, now gives me this uh, chain select page. And so the software detects kind of like the, the areas that I can extrude, so the closed areas that are generated from that sketch that I can ex extrude. So, so when I hover over these areas, you can see what I, what I can extrude. Now if I want to extrude multiple uh, areas here, what I can do is click, and as I'm holding my mouse down, I can just drag over any of the other areas. 
So it's kind of a quick way to select multiple uh, areas or uh, regions to extrude. Okay, so uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much that right there. Now we actually do not want to do all of that. I was just kind of showing how you can extrude. We actually just want to select this one right here. All right, and we can turn off the sketch. We're done with that. Um, yeah, and that kind of looks like this shape right here. That's kind of what we want to cut, right? Yeah. So um, now we're just kind of showing from like the parting line down here, I guess. We haven't really shown anything above it. We could get a really sophisticated and show uh, the shape of the material, the starting material up above it here, but we don't really need that. We're just gonna go ahead and just tell it that the starting stock is, is kind, of, kind of above our parting line by say two inches or so. So there are a couple ways to do this. We'll just do the easy way. Uh, we can just say the Z plus above that parting line to say two inches above, okay? So now when, when we create our tool paths, that will be useful uh, so the tool paths kind of know where to start. Okay, so that looks good. So now let's go ahead and just save that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go through this real quick because the rest of the video is really very similar to uh, the previous video that I made. Um, the only thing that's really different are the constraints, right? And how we draw up a 2D, uh, 2D drawings. So, so I'll just uh, shrink down the left side and come over here to the right side. Uh, everything on the left is where we do our CAD drawing and on the right is where we create our tool paths. So let's just go ahead and make a face mill and we'll pick a 50 millimeter octagonal face mill. And so now chains to machine, let's go ahead and uh, we'll click on the chains to machine. And uh, there's a few ways to do this. We can select the geometry that we want to cut down to, uh, or we can select the starting stock work piece. I'll just go ahead and do the starting stock. So we'll just click right here. And now we've selected the, the, the start of our, or the starting stock of our material. Um, but we want to go all the way down to this face over here. So the end cutting, we're going to say select the geometry and we're going to pick that face right there. Okay, so that's going to go all the way from the starting stock down to there. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, let's change our depth here a little bit. We'll make this like say 0.15, something like that. Okay, and then our step over, who knows what we can go with that. We'll just say three inches maybe, save some time. Okay, and now if we press cycle start, we would actually start to run. Cycle start, and if we're showing our tool, you can see where the tool is gonna go in order to start cutting. Okay, so now we are making chips right now. Okay, let's go ahead and stop that and then hide our tool. And uh, let's just comment out our face mill since we're done with that. And now let's, let's rough out this middle area. So we can come over here to 3D instructions and click rough solid. For this we'll pick their 3 8 uh, short end mill. And um, for this application we do not want to cut anything outside of this half dome shape so we're going to make a containment chain. So we can click on our chains here and now rather than automatically chain since we don't have geometry to really define where we're going to cut um, we would have to generate some 2D geometry going around here but I actually just realized it's probably easier than that. We can probably just tell it that we're going to use this uh, face right here as our containment chain. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. I don't know if this is going to work. We can click on that and we kind of see this green region which, which uh, indicates that's our containment chain. Looks to me like it worked okay. So we'll just go ahead and leave that. Then the solids, this is the solid that we're going to want to uh, rough out. And let's give it some clipping plane. So the top clipping plane is fine. It's our model, our bottom clipping plane. No, we don't really want to go all the way down to there. Since we've contained it to this area, it's probably okay, but there's no reason for the software to even try to go below this surface here. So we're just going to click on that and we're going to say geometry selection and then we can pick this again. Okay, so now it's not going to go uh, below uh, this uh, half dome shape at all. Okay, so that's good. So let's just go ahead and compile and see what we get. Okay, so that looks good. The containment chain worked just fine. So that's, that's easy. So um, yeah, we're gonna wanna probably leave an, a, a side amount to leave, maybe 50 thou and 50 thou here, something like that. This is the bottom amount to leave. We'll just recompile real quick. And that's good. So now again, we could just hit cycle start and we're now making chips again, cutting out our center dome. 
Okay. So that looks good. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. So and also that we're in contain our constant tool engagement mode uh, for the rough solid, which is really useful. If we can, I think it might default to offset in some cases, but uh, offset pocketing is not nearly as good as constant tool engagement in pretty much every use. So try to stick to constant tool engagement. And for the final toolpath, we're just going to make a parallel finish. So we'll click on parallel finish and do our 3 8 tool, the same tool that we had before. The solid, we're going to click on the solid model there. And then the face, we just want to cut out this face, the single face right here. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and compile and see what that gives us. Okay, so that looks good. That's just uh, what we expect. If I do a top view, you can see the lines are going uh, kind of in the, the three to nine o'clock direction. And that's because our XY angle is zero. Uh, probably be more common to cut this uh, 90 degrees, 90 degree XY angle. And so now the tools, the toolpaths are going uh, the other way, right? Uh, we can also do something like say 45 if we want to get fancy about it. And then we get a pattern kind of like that. Okay, so that all looks good. And again, cycle start. And now we're cutting. And if we were on a machine, we'd actually be making chips right now. Okay, so one more thing that um, I would recommend is coming over here to our stock options and then, um, well, it'll, it'll default to aluminum, so assuming that we have aluminum here, that, that's good. But then the maximum RPM, this will default to 20,000 RPM. Um, and usually nothing will actually try to go 20,000 RPM because the machine itself is limited to eight or 12,000 RPM. But uh, when you're first learning how to do this sort of thing, you're gonna wanna slow this down to four or 5,000 RPM. Um, it's just a good insurance policy. And so when you change this, the maximum speed here, what that'll do is any toolpath will slow down. So you can see that the maximum speed here is uh, 5,000 RPM. If I change this to say 4,000 RPM, you'll see that my RPM has changed. This is for my parallel finish cut. And it's also slowed down my feed. Okay, so it doesn't just lower the RPM and keep a high feed. It slows everything down kind of proportional to the maximum speed. Okay, so I hope that helps. Thanks.